Hi right, guys, no offense. Right, as you can see, we're out in the woods. It's if it looks a bit dark, I do apologise about that, but it is like 20 to 8 at night. And I had a video planned for going up tomorrow, but I didn't like it, so I postponed it, suspended that until next Saturday, I think it is. So, yeah. Um, I'm hoping people like this, like the beard, I can't do this video quickly. Um, it's another, not a thought, it's a thoughts video, but at the same time it's not a thoughts video. But it's something that's been on my mind for about five, four weeks, or even longer than that. Probably since we've had this lockdown and we've been in this lockdown for, uh, I think it's just coming up to our eighth week, eighth or ninth week, one of the two. And, um, yeah. Right, I'm babbling, so I'm going to crack on. Um, basically, the best people to talk to, by the way, about bags and bug out bags and inch bags and everything like that. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but it's the homeless. I spoke to a homeless person the other day, actually, and he was quite nice, he was quite pleasant. I was going to ask, I did try to ask him, can I do this, but he refused. And I can understand that, I'm not going to break his wishes, I'm not even going to say his name. But yeah, I was speaking to him, and there's so many things he was telling me. Like, I know people saying about their, their bags, and they're saying they're ultra light. Well, as he put it across, his bag's not ultra light, his bag's 48, 49, maybe 50 pound. That's worth the 27 kilograms, I think, if I remember rightly. I think it is. But yeah, it's just things like that. He's just said, this bag's heavy, and he's going to admit that. He's not going to deny it. And um, he said, basically, it's everything he needs to live, and everything he needs to survive. Because at the end of the day, it's a bag he has to have to survive. It's everything he owns is in that rucksack. And um, it just got me thinking that all these ultra-like people doing ultra-like bags at the moment. I can understand it. I get that. I understand it. But you can't go ultra light on if it's the rest of your life. Because you can't resupply on certain things. I know people say about caches. Yeah, I can understand that. I have caches. I've dug up two caches in the last two days. I dug up one yesterday. Not the last two days, sorry. Last week I've dug up two caches. I've dug up one yesterday and I've dug up one at the beginning of the week, I think. That was on Monday or Tuesday. So practically two days apart but it's not if you think about it. It's the same day Tuesday and Friday. So yeah. So I dug up two caches. One I dug up because it needed to be updated, needed to be changed and need to go through and that was a food cache. And the second one I dug up the other one, that one. That way go. This way. Second one I dug up is because basically I knew I need to resupply on it. Because basically I've Gave some of the stuff what was in that supply cache to him. I didn't need to, but at the end of the day, I had I've got extras, and he I, he had he had hardly any of it. And I know one thing everybody keeps kicking off about is power cord, but you're talking to a homeless person then, as he said, he said he is a nomad, he is a person who lives on his own, and he is a practically a lone wolf because nine times ten times people don't want to talk about him, talk to him. And he said power cord is one thing he misses. So I think I'd give him 110 feet, maybe 150 feet, something like that, a power cord out of my own pocket. And that was within one of my caches. So yeah, I know it didn't exceed more than 200 feet. So, but yeah, but he gave me knowledge. And to me, knowledge like that is key because, so much I learned from that bloke, and I'm just speaking to him for like an hour and a half, two hours maybe. This way, girl, we're going straight up. This way, please. Yeah, it's dopey dogs just basically going in the woods. This way. Yeah, we're in the woods beside where I live, so we're not actually that far from the house. But yeah, it's just things like that. It's just common sense on stuff. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to turn you around quickly, and I'm going to tell you, ask you why. Why, in a lockdown, do they come along and clear paths in a wood? In a lockdown. 
don't make sense to me. But never mind. <sighs> Come on, girl, this way. Sorry if that was loud for people to be whistling then. <sighs> but yeah, it's just like he said to me, carry what you need to carry. And if you need to carry a little bit extra, carry a little bit extra. And he said the biggest thing in the world you need to carry, yeah, and not many people carry, is clothes. If you look at my feet this morning time, you're going to laugh at me. I'm walking through these woods and I'm wearing sandals. I'm not wearing boots. I'm not wearing trainers. I'm wearing sandals. And, yeah, he said to me, gear is probably one of the most important pieces of kit he can ever give a voice to. If you can carry gear, carry the gear. Don't think that you don't need it. And hide gear in your rucksack. Don't have all your big stuff sticking out of your, out of your rucksack. Like your axe, your saw. Don't have all that hanging out on the outside because having all that on the outside, you're going to come make yourself a target. That's how we put it across, not me. So, yeah, and I know. A lot of things are changing, I get that. A lot of things are going to be changing with me and Dopey Dog, hopefully soon. But until then, we will be doing short walks like this. I know, I feel like a bit out of breath at the moment. I don't like walking up these steps, because I'm always using the same leg all the time. Right, let's try to see if I can change my legs. No, <laughs> never mind. But yeah, that's what he's put it across to me. If you can hide things in your rucksack, hide things in your rucksack. Like he said to me as well, um, the other big thing, what well, I didn't realise and I didn't really think about, yeah, I showed him where, I showed him my water purification kit, where I keep that. He said, worst place in the world, worst thing in the world to keep it. Because basically, if you're going to, if you're going to throw your rucksack down, you're going to break your fit water. And I didn't really think about that until now. So, I've designed, I'm designing myself a nice new pouch to stick that in at the moment. And, um, Oh, when I've built it, I'll show you guys. As I said, I'm not doing by my sewing machine. I do, I do everything by hand. And that's another thing he said to me as well. And I said, I'm lucky I can do that. And that's sewing. So, yeah. Oh, this is so nice. Really nice. I was saying guys, yeah, it's just saying to me about gear. That's how he put it across to me. Think about gear, think about what you use, think about what you don't use. I know a lot of people keep saying, yeah, you test your gear, if you don't use it in that trip, take it out. Yeah, I understand that, I get that. But at the same time, I don't get it. Because if you use it, and you take it out the first day, you do take it out the second time you're going out, you're not going to, and you need it. What's the point having it? What's the point using it? <sighs> so, yeah. Oh, do apologise about this, guys. I'm just still, as I said, still learning on this camera. <sighs> so, yeah, it's just things like that, guys. It's like stupid things. Like he said to me what I thought was quite stupid. Well, I didn't... I didn't really think about it. I didn't. I did think about it, but I didn't really realise at the time. Yeah, and that. Um, this might sound really stupid. How do I put this? How do I say this? It's like your tarpaulin, for example. My tarpaulin. I've got a tarpaulin, as you know. Or no, my three by three DD tarpaulin, or I should say by ten by ten DD tarpaulin. 
because that's where everybody most mainly knows it as. Hang on, this camera's lost me. I don't know what's going on with this camera, but never mind. But yeah, it's just I don't know. I'm not I'm not being picky, but he said about the tarpaulin, and he said that's the best thing in the world, but at the same time it's the worst thing in the world. And I truly don't know what he means on that yet because I've never been in situations where I'm not in that situation. I've only been in situations where it's hammered down the lane, I can put the tarpaulin up, Bob's your uncle, done. Same as everything else. As I said, I know I look different at the moment. I can, I feel different. But yeah, it's silly little things. But not many people see them. Not many people hear about them. Not many people work them out. So if you want to talk, if you want to build a proper bag, don't listen to these people. I know sometimes there's a lot of people call themselves, I won't call them experts, but they think they're experts. And there's a lot of people out there thinking that, oh, you could just carry this, you just carry that. That is it. Or, oh, I can run into the, into the woods with just this knife. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, but I'm still going to live in comfort. Yeah. Even if I give up everything, like even if I give up my house, I'm still going to be living on comfort. And I don't care what anybody says. Right, guys, I'm leaving it here. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.